Over the years, Google Ads has offered a few different types of video creation tools. There was the Video Director app many years ago. Then there was a Video Builder tool, which we have a video about right here, but it's pretty old and the beta is not open anymore. Pretty much because they've taken those ideas and moved them into the asset library. So in this video, we'll show you how you can create your own video creatives in the asset library. And we'll go over a few different types of templates that you can use that may be best for the campaign that you'd like to create. Right now, I am in the overview section of Google Ads, but no matter where you are to access the asset library, we need to go up to tools and settings. And for now, under shared library, it's the very bottom option, asset library. So let's click on that. And you're going to see a bunch of examples. There's a good amount of assets at the bottom, as well as a few folders up top with some wonderful images of Michelle. But I'm not here to talk about the entire asset library. We already made a video about the asset library and pretty much almost everything you can do as of right now. So if you want to learn a lot more about the asset library besides just video creation, you can check out this video right here. So one thing I want to get rid of right away is the question of, well, Joe, I already see videos within your asset library. And yes, these are videos I have used for other examples. So whether you're running other YouTube campaigns or responsive display ads, those sort of things. But the point of this demo and the video creation tool is if you don't have any pre-existing video assets, you need to have something created to use in a future ad. So if you need to make one yourself, head up to the blue plus button. I'm going to click on it to open it, head down to video, and there we can create our own video. Now, if you have seen the video builder tool that I mentioned in the intro, you're going to see that this looks pretty familiar because now Google ads gives us within the asset library, pretty much the same templates that we had within that video builder tool beta. If I scroll down a little bit, you can see there's a variety of different things. There's branding videos. We see a few to promote your app. As I scroll up, there's promotions. We see a six second bumper ad. The first one we see in the top left is showing phone interaction. The one in the middle is a product catalog if you're shopping focused. So you see there are different templates depending on your goals of your video campaigns, depending on the goals that this particular campaign or ad is trying to achieve. So since there are a variety of different types of templates to use, I'm not gonna go over every single one. You now know where you can go and create these videos within the asset library, so you can choose them yourself. However, I do want to run over at least one example so we can get a better understanding of what the end product of this video creation tool looks like. You see within each template, we get a basic understanding of what type of assets you're going to need to have while creating this video. Let me go down to this first one right here. If I want to choose the show phone interaction template, I'm going to need three images plus one logo, and there's around seven text areas. If I'm going to go to the next one and highlight the product catalog, you can see there's five images plus two logos and then 14 text areas. So each video template is going to have different requirements of what type of image and text assets you will need to be able to create your video. For the sake of this demo, I'm going to pretend I'm doing it for the Paid Media Pros account and choose the Feature Your Brand template. And as I highlight over the button, you get an idea of what the template looks like to see if it's right for you. So let's click on this one. First, I'm going to go up and name my video. And then you can go down to your brand colors. So within the brand colors, you can use hex color codes to customize the look and feel to your brand colors. So Michelle and I do have specific color codes to our Pay Media Pros brand. So let me go and enter in one. And then for the text, let me try to enter in another one. Not sure how this is going to look, but I just want to put something in. You can see they have the little paint drop emblems. This is how old I am. I'm so used to this symbol being part of MS Paint. So if you click on the circle, this little emblem, you can shift it over to the color that you want. Or if you click on the same little icon, I can go over to anywhere within the screen that you're currently on and capture a specific color. So it's only going to be on the current screen that you're on. So if you have specific colors in mind, you are going to need to drag the image of that color onto the screen so you can click on it. Right now I have this reddish color, whatever it is. I can come over here, choose this more salmon type color. There's a white color, so on and so on. But luckily, Michelle and I have the specific hex color codes that we can use in here. And you could see there's a more purplish one and then a turquoise color one that's kind of part of our logos. I accidentally clicked on the wrong thing, so let me put the right one back in. Okay, there we go, back to the purple. If you do not know the color codes that make up your brand colors that you're currently using, there are a variety of websites out there you can upload a picture, 
highlight over a certain area of that picture and they'll tell you the color code of whatever section that you've focused on. It's one way to get as close to your brand colors as possible. And next, for this particular template, we need one logo and it's gonna give us the recommended size. So if I go down to the plus logo link right here, it is already gonna pull up the asset library. They did give a recommended size, in this particular case, 1000 by 500. I could try to use this one, and luckily enough that it crops properly, even though it was a square image. I'm good with this one, so I'm just gonna select it, and then my mouse is already on save down at the bottom, and there, the logo is gonna be ready for the video. Let me shoot back up so I can scroll down a little bit more. Next, we need a few different images. Again, I can click on any of the image links here. It's gonna pull open the asset library again. So if you have any images in here that you already wanna use, you can add those. But you can also go up to upload and start adding additional image files that you may not already have within your asset library. So let me just upload a few different examples. I just found a few images. So yes, I can still upload a variety of images at one time. However, over here, I did this all within the image one section. So I still need to choose for right now, just one image. I'm gonna do this one first. You can see my dimensions were a little bit shorter than what they recommended. So they do have a little bit of a cropping option right here. I can try to drag around as much as possible that would fit the particular specs that they want for the video. If I'm good with where I have it, not much wiggle room in this case. So I'm just gonna hit select. And then my mouse is down here so I can click on save. And there I have the first image. I'm gonna need to add another one for image two. And then I'll choose another one that I uploaded. Same thing, I could crop it but there's not much wiggle room in this one either. So I'll select this, hit save, and then choose another one for image three. I don't know where those other two went, so I'm gonna try to upload again. Here I can just move it up and down a little bit and try to crop it. I'm good with where it is, so I'll just hit select and save it. And there we have the three images needed for this particular video. I'm gonna scroll down a little bit more, and here we see I need three more images. So let's knock this out really quick. I'm good with that, so let's scroll down. And now we get to the text area of this template. You can see within each of the text fields, it gives you some guidance on where this text is going to appear within the video. For text one, it's gonna be the overall main message. For text two, three, and four, they're gonna be shown for specific images that you have used within the video. So for text two, the message is gonna be for whatever I've selected within image four. Not the best image, but sometimes that's how I look when I speak. And you can see text three for image five, text four for image six, and then closing out with your call to action. So I'm gonna fill these fields in, jump ahead a little bit so we can keep on moving. All right, I filled the fields in with whatever nonsense. You know I'm just doing this for the demo. This is not how I would make a legit marketing video. But all five of these text fields were required fields. Remember, before we even chose this template, Google let us know how many images and text components we would need for this particular template. So it's good to do your research ahead of time, prep all those elements so when you're creating the video, it goes a lot quicker. But after you have your text elements in, you can scroll down and choose a particular font. If I go up and choose this one and click on this field, there are a few different options I can choose from. And whichever option you choose, you can see there's gonna be a few different more options here. I'm not gonna get into what every single variant of these fonts can do, so I'm just gonna pick one. And as you can see, in a little bit of the preview on the bottom, we saw the font change. Not a big fan of that one, but I just wanna keep moving. And last, you can choose your music. From the drop down, you see there is a variety and it's kind of giving you an idea of what mood each of the song selection would be. Do you want funky? Do you want dark? There's happy, there's calm, there's bright, there's dramatic, all that stuff. I'm just gonna scroll down really quick. And let's choose this wolf moon. It's inspirational. Let's see what this sounds like. If you want to get a preview, you can click on the play button. If I click on it now, only I'm going to be able to hear it. It's not going to appear within the demo. So you'll just have to go through the variety of options to find out yourself. Now, while I was creating all of the elements within this particular template, hopefully you saw the storyboard on the bottom update. And as you can see with some of the images that I uploaded, doesn't look really good. There's a lot of parts of the images that I uploaded that look really weird and cut off. You can keep scrolling over to the right hand side. You also see how the branding will look. So in this particular text portion, even though we get 35 characters, they put a big block over the image. And look how the font just looks kind of weird in front of it. If you don't like how this particular image looks, then you know you need to go up and either update the image or update the text portion, relook at the storyboard, and see if it's an area that you approve so you can move on. 
Google's showing us within this particular template that this is the area where a user can skip your video. So pretty much we're hitting the five second point right here. Do you have your main message in there? So if a user skips it, you can get free advertising, but still get the brand message and your main value message across. Already a few quick sections where you can go up and make those changes before you create your video. If we move over to the arrow, keep sliding to the right. The rest of this doesn't look that bad for me not really planning any of the images I was using for this demo. There's our logo, there's our call to action, and I can't move over anymore. We are at the end of this 15 second video. If everything looks good, and I'm not saying this video looks good, but let's just keep on moving. You can move over to the blue button that says create video and let's click on it. And I jumped ahead just a teeny tiny little bit because it could take a couple minutes for the video to populate to get to this certain view. But Google went ahead and created the video for me. If I hit play, we'll be able to see what the final product looks like. And right now it's muted. If I click unmute, you would be able to hear the music, but in this case, the way I have my recording set up, you're not gonna be able to hear the music, but there is the music being played. And it's just gonna keep going on loop. So as you see with the images that I uploaded and how I cropped them within the asset library, some of them don't look too well. And we saw that in the preview when we were still making the video. So even if you don't catch it ahead of time while you're still making this particular video, getting a look at the final video asset will give you a better understanding of what you may wanna change. And that's more than just the images. Look at the fonts that you're using, the color codes that you're using. Would the final video be something you would wanna put in front of your users? And then you have a few different options on what you wanna to do to this channel. You can choose a video ad storage channel. It's pretty much where your video is gonna be housed or most likely what you're going to do. And what I recommend is to use your own channel because when you use your own channel and hopefully you already have your YouTube channel linked with Google ads, then you'll be able to create YouTube user audiences from these videos when you do use them in your ads. So I always like to do that to make sure that we can keep the stats and view some additional metrics that are available once you do link your YouTube account with Google ads. So no, this is not a video I would ever release to the public, something we just slapped together for this demo, but let's pretend that I'm okay with this. I wanna use this in my ads. I'm gonna go down and select upload video. And here we see, it may take another few minutes, so let me jump ahead. So now it's saying our video is uploaded. We can now use the video in our campaigns and find it by this URL below. So the first thing I recommend you do is visit this specific video link. One thing we see on the actual video watch page is that whatever I use as the name of the video asset is going to be the video title. And the move I like the best is that this video is unlisted. That means it does not live organically on your YouTube channel where anyone can see it. The only way people will see this ad is if they have the direct link that we just clicked on or if they see your video as part of an ad. So since you have the link and you can share it, if you want to use it in other means, like embed it on a web page, use it as part of an email template, just go and edit your video. Now I can choose a thumbnail or upload my own, enter in all my descriptions, Change the visibility if it's something that you do wanna make public, if you're very happy with your final end template, add all the other settings, and then save it. So now let's head back into Google Ads, and then we can return to the asset library. And now, added to my asset library is my video. So when you are creating campaigns within Google Ads, in the video I already created about the asset library, I do show you how you can create folders. So if you do wanna have specific folders just for your video assets, check out the video. I shared a link earlier, and you'll be able to see how to do that. Could go up under video, look at creating another one. Sorry, I'm not gonna go over the voiceover portion today. And then keep creating as many different variants as you want. I was thinking about going through a variety of different examples, but you can see based on everything that you need, it's pretty self-explanatory. So look at the options and find out which ones are best for you and keep testing out a bunch of different options. Once you know what components you need for each of the templates, you'll be able to plan out a variety of different options. Go ahead, get all your text ready get all your images ready, and then create several different video assets at the same time. And then you can immediately start testing those videos out in your display or video campaigns. Let me head back a little bit. If I drop down, here's the option where you could add your voiceover if you have one prepped. And if you open the asset, here's another chance for you to preview it, and it does make it easier for you to share. Now, one feature that the last video builder tool had was the ability to just easily copy and make simple edits to certain videos. As of right now, it doesn't look like the asset library offers that feature, so hopefully that's something that comes back. Still, it doesn't take too long to get a lot of these video assets ready, especially if you're on a lower budget and can't really afford to get some decent video creative. I already jump ahead to a fake ad group we have created in our account, but here's an example of 
the template for a responsive display ad. If you're not familiar with responsive display ads, you can check out this video here. But one component of a responsive display ad, even though it is optional, is to add videos. So if I click on the blue videos link, here is where we can select our specific video asset. And if I had more than one, I could select a variety of them. You still can search for the video link on YouTube. If I click save, and let me head over to desktop, going to change the example to video ads. And there we see if we do land on a placement that has video ad space like this, that's how our video could appear. And even if you were gonna create a video campaign within Google Ads, selecting your actual video creative for the ad is the same thing. It's gonna open up the asset library, you can choose the video that you just created using this tool, and then complete the video campaign process. This asset library video creation tool is very basic. However, it's also very free. See if there's a template in the asset library that goes along with the campaign goals of what you're trying to promote. One that pops in my head pretty quickly is the one for sales and promotions. If you got a lot of sales coming and going, and it's just not in your company's budget to constantly make videos for every single promotion that you have, this could be a quick fix. It may not look as professional as you like but there are still ways that you can customize it, let alone add your own voiceover options to still give you a good amount of control and customization features. If you have any questions on the templates that you can use within the asset library or what changes you can make to your video after it's been uploaded to your channel, please let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. If you found it useful, give us a thumbs up below. We release a new video at least once a week, so if you wanna see more from the Paid Media Pros channel, be sure to subscribe.